This is Axis and Allies 1914 on the Two or Less channel, and we're going to do the works here. Uh, every battle, every dice roll, it's going to make it a stupidly long series, which I shall split down into, well, loads of little sections. We'll, we'll see how long it takes. Could be years, you know. Things that you should know before we start. Um, you might have noticed these black things. These are pieces from Risk. I use them to, de to designate the um, minefields that uh, are in all the oceans around the ports. I'm always forgetting them. I also use some convoy markers from G40, and I put them in 2, 7 and 8 for the unrestricted economic warfare -y thing that the Germans can do against the US and the Brits. Again, it's... <laughs> I have a brain like a sieve sometimes. Uh, oh, what I do do... I put a bit of um, a bit of blue tack on some spare ones of these, and um, I put them on the, the the crease or underneath the board to keep the, the boards together because they're always moving around. That's, that's that's sort of quite a handy thing, and I and I put obviously a corresponding one of these markers on the IPC chart um, on on the actual roundels. Can't pick this thing up now on on the roundels to remind me that that country has got some. Eco damage coming its way on on all the on the G40 and on this game. Um, speaking of which, with the national production chart, cool idea. Nobody uses it, as you know. Let me show you something that I've um, done right from the start. Um, hop over here, balance the camera. There is the economic IPC table charty thing. It's, it's the sprue, <laughs> yes, from where you punch the, the roundels out from. Bits of blue take, blue tack, nope. Bits of blue masking tape um, here and further along. And quite simply, these are the tens, 10, 30, 50, 60. You probably not need any more than that. And these are the, the ones on the IPCs. Um, very simple, and it just works. And the, the roundels obviously fit in to the holes they came from, they don't jump out the way. It doesn't prevent me from forgetting to move them, but it does prevent them from jumping. Other little things, as you will know, is that there's never enough pieces. German artillery and infantry are short. Usually the Brits are short. We're going to be using something from one of the 1940s versions. I've, I have several. I'll, I'll take whatever comes to hand. However, um... Chip stacks. Move this around again. These chips, you run out of them as well. 1942 second edition chips lock in beautifully. So um, I use the grey ones as generic extra infantry. Um, they can be any power as long as they're below one of the one of these sculpts. Um, so. Last things to mention before we get going. Um, let me move the camera up and over and round and down. Is the game starts off with Trieste attacking Serbia um, following the assassination of um, the uh, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, who was the presumptive heir to the Austrian throne. Um, Controversy, whether it was Serbians or an inside job, we, we won't go into, into that. Um, over up in Moscow, right up there, six infantry, two artillery and no Vladimir Lenin. He has ensconced himself in France um, following the um, execution of his brother, for a part that um, the other brother played in the in a, a early assassination plot against the Romanov family, and uh, Vladimir Lenin's younger brother Yoni Lenin, he stayed in Moscow. He's playing with a a Russian skiffle band called Darkwari Men. I think I should um, get on with playing the game now. OK, our thunking time is over. Austria-Hungary have bought themselves a fighter, a couple of guys and uh, three artillery. 
Uh, the fighter we're reasoning that the faster we can get a bird in the sky, the better we're going to be. Uh, they're going to be attacking in three places. The Trieste crew have split themselves two ways. A couple of guys are going to go have a go at Venice along with the Tyrolean crew. The rest of them are going to go into Serbia supported by two guys from Budapest. The rest of the Budapest lot are going to go into Romania. Obviously these two places supported by Russians have uh, suddenly spawned themselves a heavy bit of Russian resistance and there was half a thought about using Galicia up here to attack maybe the Ukraine just to tidy things, tie things up <laughs> rather than tidy them up, tie things up um, but I don't want to spread ourselves too thin Similar the sort of reasoning behind not moving these boats out into the Med proper running the risk of mines and sea battles just to take Albania the uh, Serbian battle is already on the board there are two infantry in the higher register with the three artillery, looking at threes or lesses, and they have got two hits. So that's two off already, and they have now four at two, and they get two more hits. That is pretty massive. That's the four units are going to be wiped out of Serbia to start the game off with. Serbia are defending at threes and they get just the one hit. I'll divvy that up, get the next battle on the board for you. This is the sticky situation in Romania. There are 10 infantry, a couple of artillery on the attack. These roll at threes. Oh, massive! Four hits! Wow! And the remaining eight infantry, all rolling at twos, and get another three hits. I was expecting that to be a sponge pudding with a side order, a spotted dick. It was going to be so sticky. It's going to be a massacre, I'm afraid. These are the defending rolls, all at threes, and just the two hits. I think that means Austria-Hungary will be into Romania as well. This is the position in Venice, a much more balanced affair we are hoping for the Italians' sake, that is. I think they might, you may even suggest that the um, Allied forces, the Entente, have the upper hand. We shall see. Austria-Hungary roll these four units at three and get Two hits again. They keep on hitting with this artillery-infantry combination. And six units at two. Infantry on their own. And no hits. Finally, the, um, some uh, bad luck for them. The Italians are defending eight units at three. And get four good hits. Next is the Russians. They've got... Um, to put their thinking caps on because um, Galicia and the uh, two German states up there look as if Poland will be a one-hit wonder. This is Russia on their turn one. I'm not going to show you their purchase just this second and I'm not going to show you any dice rolls because they didn't roll any dice. This isn't Russia's 1940 one forty-two, whichever take your pick. Um, shut up shop and hope someone comes to save us kind of game. Th there's a reason behind this. They have moved units in from Tatarstan uh, into Sevastopol and they've moved units from uh, Belarus into Ukraine, from Moscow to Belarus, from Belarus into Poland and from Livonia into Poland. They spread themselves around a little bit. But we're going to try something different. I haven't done this before. Never seen it done before. Might work out absolutely terribly. There's usually a reason why stuff hasn't been done before. It's usually a bad idea. We shall find out. They are buying themselves one, two, three, four fighters. Germany already have a fighter. Austria-Hungary have a fighter. If the front can hold for long enough that the fighters can come into effect, they may be able to swing the um, balance of action in their favour. 
clearly the next attack on them is going to be the important one. But we will see what happens. Um, next up is Germany. The Germans have had to respond. They have brought themselves to play them and gone light on the infantry and artillery. But they cannot really let um, Russia rest on their laurels and come forward to them. They're going to go after them. They are moving their units in uh, from Prussia and Silesia into Poland with the one plane that's come over from Germany that they did have. They had to consider whether to move that plane over to France because, again, they're not letting France rest on their laurels. They're coming forward into, um, into, from Alzac into Lorraine and also into Belgium, mobilising the French units that are in there as well. And they're going for some sea battles in 15 and the British crew down here in C Zone 9. Um, if we can get them all in past the mines. The first thing that's on the board already is the Poland attack. We should roll that and then go back to the others in a second or two. So, the six of these infantry get increased up with the artillery support. The artillery have air superiority. They all move up to there. Let's roll this out and see where we get to. We'll do the easy one first with the um, fighter plane also getting an attack at uh, ground units at a two and it misses. That we can get out of the way. We go for the um, big fours first. We have six of them rolling at fours. And we've just smashed them. <laughs> oh, six hits. Wow. Um, that may have been a really foolish <laughs> Russian tactic of all those planes. We're going to find out. Um, the increased infantry at threes. Just the one hit. This is just the one, but that's going to be painful enough. And the remaining infantry chugging in at twos. And they get one hit. That will be eight off. So uh, Russia will survive in Poland. What damage can they do back? They have about uh, 13, is it, at threes? Let's have a... Ooh, my goodness. That's going to take some counting up. Um, you, you can see what I can see. That's massive. I'll get that um, changed up on the board and then get back to you with the next attack. Well, the final score up there in Poland was that Germany lost 10 units to Poland's 8. Uh, we're down now in Lorraine. I've got that on the card. We'll roll this one out. And Germany will move 6 units in at 3s on their attack. Taking 1, 2, 3, 4 hits. Nice. And they'll have 4 at 2 with no hits. Okay. Have to think that France are pretty chuffed with that. 8 at 3 in defence. And just the two hits. Next door to the uh, region of Lorraine, or the prefecture of Lorraine, isn't it, in uh, France? Maybe. Is Belgium. And the battle's on the board. Let's see what we got. France uh, are being attacked by Germany. Germany have three infantry supporting three of the artilleries at threes. And get three hits. That's all the threes. Sorry, there's a fourth hit there. And with their infantry on their own rumbling through, another hit. That is uh, the French resistance wiped uh, in Belgium. In reply, all at three, they get three hits. Um, that's a round of threes apart from the odd four. We shall um, roll for the uh, sea battle taking place. These two submarines have come in from C Zone 7. They have to dodge the minefield, so that's going to be two at one first. Let me roll some dice. And both the submarines have made it into there. They attack at two, and neither of them get a hit. Eek. Battleship's going to roll one at four, and takes one of the subs out. Mm. Do we press that attack? Um, I think we do. 
I think we do. It's it's a, it's a big prize, and we miss again. Battleship's going to roll. Oops, that's fallen onto the board, not onto the debris, and we've lost both submarines. <sighs> Ouch, Germany. Ouch, Germany. That's not too cool. And over to the big one. In Sea Zone uh, 9, is this the one off the British coast in the North Sea? It is. We have two submarines trying to get into there. They are in successfully. We have two cruisers trying to get in. They are successful. <laughs> and the battleship. That gets in. Well, OK. So, let's roll it. Um, two submarines are going to roll at twos. And neither of them get a hit. Two cruisers roll at threes. And they get two hits. That is going to be painful. Uh, one off of there. And one ship's going to be damaged. And the battleship rolling at fours. Another hit. So, well... The UK are in trouble, but that's going to happen, isn't it? Their reply. Two cruisers firing at threes. One hit. Well, I think a submarine is the obvious and cheapest choice. The battleship rolling at four. Uh, that gets a hit. So the German took a hit on there. I wanted to sort of save it as much as I could do. Um, all we have left then is the uh, one British battleship take any hits. So the one sub from Germany, it misses. The two cruisers, well, they got a hit. That's now all over Red Rover for that fleet. British, tra uh, British battleship in reply, it misses. So transport gets lost. No matter what happens, it can't uh, defend itself. Germany lose one submarine, and they have a damaged ship. That will be it for Germany. Next up is France. This is the French purchase for turn one. The, the repercussions of Moscow purchasing four planes at the start, well it's rippling out like a stone in a puddle. Um, they have to buy because Germany bought, Germany bought because Russia bought, you get the drift. Um, they got themselves infantry artillery as well. We have a quick fly around to see, show you what's happening with their units in Africa. Um, guys from Algeria and Tunisia are shuffling themselves forward. Guys from Morocco has moved into West Africa. There'll be some sort of battle there sometime soon, we think. The Germans have moved forward and stolen from the Brits because they're like that. Um, one guy from Bordeaux has jumped on the transport that didn't get killed by the submarines in the last attack along with the battleship, came into Portugal and mobilised the four units. Two IPC um, value of, of that area, which means that it mobilises one infantry and three artillery. And I've forgotten to put the roundel on and adjust the IPC chart. I should do that in a second. The other French ships down here, they're going to move into the same sea zone for simple reason that they slip out of my fingers, that they can collect some of these guys in Portugal and ship them down to the south or up to the north or back into France, depending upon how the results of these battles turn out. Now, these battles, interestingly, um, France has split some of their Burgundy region Two guys and one infantry are headed into Italy. And they're going to help support this attack from Austria-Hungary as it's coming through. The rest of the guys have moved into Lorraine. Guys from Brest have gone to Picardy. Picardy have moved into Belgium, Holland to try to resolve that. So, the Burgundy crew into Lorraine plus the guys that are in already is on the board. This is how it looks. With air superiority, they will get a single roll at one with their, with their plane. It misses. But they have three at four and get three hits straight away on the Germans. This isn't looking good for them. Three artillery guys supported get two hits. 
it's just down to the naked infantry in twos and gets the, the final hit that they need. That is the six German hits that they require to uh, reclaim Lorraine. Germany have half a dozen dice at threes and they get four hits. That's a little bit over the top. Uh, I'll put that on the board and adjust the IPCs. On the board in front of us is the battle for Belgium. Six infantry, couple of artilleries, not the biggest attack against four infantry and three artillery from the Germans. This could be um, harder. In French hands, we have two artillery supporting two infantry, four at three. Ooh, that's a good start. That's three hits. And the four infantry, one more hit. It's not as decisive as we thought it could be, um, but a damn sight better than we were hoping for in the first place. Germany have seven dice. Hold your breath. Oh my giddy aunt. One, two, three, four, five off of the French. That's pretty terrible. Um, I shall put that onto the board. I shall also put the um, mobilise the French forces into Paris. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, mademoiselle. And I think we should end the video there because that's going to be about half an hour's worth of recording time. Plenty too much for my decrepit old computer to um, work its way through. Um, after that, uh, video number two in this series, we'll start off with the Brits deciding what they do in uh, the UK, possibly spending more time over in uh, India, and thinking about what, what they're going to do in the, in the um, Middle East. I'll see you then.